Welcome back. This is Alan Olson's American Dreams Keys to Life Success. We've been talking here today with J.D. Bond of J.D. Bond Consulting. Our topic today is how to get a business going in this broken economy. You know, Alan, a lot of new businesses are heavily financed because individuals just don't have the funds to finance them themselves. Do you think it's wise for businesses to be so heavily advanced nowadays? You know, I, I have my own philosophy on this, and that is, if you look to the past, and we look at the baby boomers, um, you know, we had lots of resources out there with other people's time. And so, beginning when these baby boomers started to come out of school in the late 70s, early 80s, we developed this uh, thing called processes. And if you get a process in place, you can keep adding more and more and more people uh, to the process, and if the model works, your consumer base will continue to buy, 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 buy. So you saw companies like HP go from just a few employees you know, to tens of thousands of employees. And many companies just scaled terrifically based on this, uh, this, this concept of the process of other people's time. Um, the other thing that you had in there was other people's money. And about the late 80s, or actually started about the mid 80s, you had these investment banking firms coming up with these new concepts of the IPO and uh, putting money in the businesses and, and credit became very loose. If you, if you trace back into you know, the, the history of the debt, debt to equity ratio in this, in this country, you'll find that um, it was relatively stable up until the early 80s and all of a sudden it started, this is not a political statement, but when Reaganomics came in we kind of um, actually probably started back the gold standard back in 73. But it, it, we, we moved away from the Federal Reserve need to have adequate resources in place, deregulated the banks, and all of a sudden put in place the fact that uh, credit became very loose in this country. So when we look at uh, other people's money, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride for the past roughly, oh, we're almost at 30 years of this. Uh, but we're in some interesting times today as we now look back and you know, seeing what's happened in this country with the federal deficit, the world banking system, no longer just the U.S., but look at the markets over in, in Europe. And uh, so I'd I like to turn this back to J.D. Mm -hmm. uh, with your position on this whole thing about financing, I'm sure that you see many businesses that, that are looking for financing, financing. Would you steer new startups in a direction to be heavily financed? Well, no. Uh, but that always balances out with the opportunity and the business. If it's an extraordinary, revolutionary new software idea, and it can change the world uh, so that they, they leverage it out now and it goes to 10 or 12 or 20x. So if you've got a lot of multiples that you're hoping for in a short window, that is, that's a different, but it's normal business day to day to day. Investors are going to look for the owner to have somewhere around 50 to 60, maybe 80 to 90 percent equity in the business already. Now, if you don't have that much, doesn't mean you don't start the business, but I can assure you that investors are going to want you to have your money in the deal. If your money's in the deal, it says you're committed. You know, the difference between the chicken and the pig. You know, <laughs> for breakfast, the pig's really committed. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I do see that, that, uh, that the VCs and investors want to see that you have skin in the game. Absolutely. So, Alan, what about you? What, what is your advice for new businesses and how much they should finance? You know, I, I, uh, I have my own thoughts on this, but I believe that uh, less leverage is better unless it can really be justified and supported. I, uh, J.D., I don't see venture capital, although they may be saying, look, I'll give you uh, five, ten million for the, uh, the business. They're not sitting there writing a check right away for that, are no, they? No, not at all, not at all. You're hitting milestones, and every time you hit a milestone in your forecast, in your business plan, then they release some more money because you're delivering on the forecast. So every time you hit a milestone, they pull back more money or provide more opportunity, more resources to you. But you've got to hit those milestones. So this is where the smart money comes in. Absolutely. And um, yeah, if a person has the right type of financial team together and these advisors with the know-how, mm -hmm. the smart money is going to say, you know, you show me, show me the results, and then I'll give you a little bit more. Absolutely. And I love a good argument between a marketing guy and a finance guy. Because what comes out of that, the finance guy, the accounting folks, they're going to be very conservative. The marketing guy is going to be aggressive. That What comes out of that debate is good stuff. So encourage those kinds of debates because on the one side, you want people in the marketplace driving and building new thresholds of success. But on the other side, you want a finance person in there controlling the way the money's spent so that success 
has risk mitigation, uh, uh, mitigation built in. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree with that. Also, the other thing you see with the smart money is a lot of people can see that uh, if a business is starting to take off, they want to get their money into that deal, mm -hmm. and, and they find out that often the doors are closed. Absolutely. So, so I think it's important then, would you agree that uh, as a person starting up the business and interviewing uh, the, the investors to make sure that they, they choose well? Well, choosing the right investors or investors choosing the right, both sides, you're making a choice. And, and, and there's a lot of chemistry requirements here, too. You know, I've seen a lot of companies hit the wall. They had good ideas and good investors, but the chemistry between the investors and the entrepreneur wasn't right. Okay, well, let me, let me ask a question another way. Reality check. Mm -hmm. Can anyone just go up to a VC and say, I got a great idea? No, forget about it. Forget about it. If you don't already have the connections and the relationships, I can assure you, um, if you're calling in here to this show and or writing emails about where do I find... Uh, venture capitalists, you're probably not going to be able to get access to them. I mean, the people you're connected to, uh, consultants, uh, people you've got on your team, already have those relationships. VCs want 10x growth in three years. That's their business. Have you got 10x built in? If not, you might want to look at some of the other ways of getting financing. That's why we do private placement memoranda. The reason we do PPMs is to raise money when it, maybe it's not 10x yet, but it will be. So that's there's other ways to raise that kind of capital. You know, so. And, and I, I guess it, the company that has uh, the, the same idea and, and same talent within uh, approaching VC, if that company has Warren Buffett as an advisor sitting on the board. <laughs> well, absolutely. And if you look, if you've got revenue streams, if you've got patents, if you've got resources and assets built in, and you've got a growth curve built, now you can start making calls. And people, there are people, consultants uh, in the business that know how to get you an audience with the right people at the right time. But you can't just take. A great look. I've got a, I've got a sign in my office. Says, "Great ideas are the cheapest thing available." Okay, execution is precious. Are you executing? Have you built in plans to get it executed and delivered? Because uh, they don't want you to be one of those ten that nine that fail out of ten. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I can see that, and and oftentimes what you find there is those people that have executed well on the first company tend to do it again and again. And again. Isn't it funny how success breeds success? <laughs> I think the reputation, and sometimes they may not always have the best ideas, nevertheless their companies are very profitable. There are people that say that when Cisco got started they didn't have the best products. You know, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've always kind of looked at Cisco as that they probably made more money with the investors, the venture capital that they did, rather than the, the, the product that they, uh, that they basically set their company in on. Well, there's a lot of that that's happened, but when you, when you guess right in that kind of volume and velocity, boy, you love that success, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what trends do you see happening out there right now? Well, you mentioned it. Um, in, in the technology space, I'm seeing, a, you know, can you imagine what has happened in communications? You know, television's now connected to the Internet. Yes. Television's connected... Broadcasting, um, that's on the internet now. IPTV, we're seeing a lot of that. Video conferencing, I probably do 15 to 20 video conferences a week. They don't cost me anything. I do them right on my PC and they're high definition, high quality. Um, you're not jumping on air, we're not, people aren't traveling as much as they used to travel, so we're seeing that take place. As we said earlier, biomed because of uh, the baby boomers. And a lot of stuff in industrial energy, you know. Going green, it's not just an attitude, it's becoming profitable. As it becomes profitable, we're seeing more products being drawn into that space. Oh, what do you think about Solyndra here? This is a, something in the Bay Area, $500 million spent and, <laughs> and unaccounted for. I mean, you know, it's a... Uh... Well, um, somebody wasn't paying attention. <laughs> if they had milestones, intermediate milestones, I mean, that, that's simple business 101. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, there will be news, more news coming out on that, but... Uh, but I think that uh, it, it probably speaks to the effect of who was asleep at the wheel and not really watching what Absolutely. was going on and balancing it out. So. Well, that's what we do for our clients. You know, we, 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 we help them find the resources, how to find the way, how to do more with less, and if they're not implementing and executing on best practices, get back in that game. Well, in terms of the, uh, the biotech or biomed, mm -hmm. have you heard, uh, what do you hear coming down the road? Well, uh, some of which I can't talk about because I'm under non-disclosure. Yeah. But we're seeing we're going to see more and more sharing of the data mining information by pharma, big pharma companies. There are going to be ways that small entrepreneurs and developers can get access to some of the testing results 
they couldn't get access to in the past, and that's going to accelerate what we're seeing being developed in medicines and processes and all of that. Now there's more pressure, too, we see about how you get paid. In the future, if a hospital, a uh, healthcare organization doesn't take care of a patient properly the first time, they don't get paid the second time. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we have a, one of our clients started a company, uh, Appymetrics. Mm-hmm. And basically where they were mapping the DNA or the, the, the gene pools of every individual. And uh, they are able to use that to kind of look at research and development for, you know, trying to catch genetic trends that correct them in the future. That's the business my son-in-law is in. Um, and uh, thank God he's in that business. I like right exactly where he is today. Oh, it's just amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So I think that, you know, we live in an exciting time. We do. And uh, those people that are in transition right now, if they think it through and, 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 and look at where their passion rests, lots of opportunity out there. This is the land of opportunity. In fact, there's probably never a greater opportunity for doing a new business than today. Correct. So, well, I like all this, J.D. I appreciate you coming in and talking to us about how to get business going in this broken economy. Uh you know, if, if people want to find out more about you, how do they contact you? JDVon.com or JDVon at JDVon.com. There you go. The internet, JDVon at JDVon.com. That's correct. So. Go ahead and spell Vaughn for us. V is in Victor, A U G H N. Thanks, Jay. And it's JD. All right, JD, thank you very much. This is Alan Olson's American Dreams, the Key to Life Success. We'll be back with more information on what to do with your job search after this short break. <laughs>